Later, when we go to break down the components of a bond's profit and loss or return, we'll find that an important assumption that we make is how does the term structure behave over time? And broadly, following Tuckman, we have three scenarios from which to choose. The first is called realized forwards, meaning as we go forward in time, we'll assume that the forward rates are realized, that is, they are good predictors. The second, at the opposite extreme and very different, is the assumption of an unchanged term structure. That is to say, today's term structure will apply in six months. That's at the other extreme. And then also the third scenario is unchanged yields. That's where we assume that the yield today is the same as it is in six months. I'm not exactly using Bruce Tuckman's values here because I wanted to focus on the idea and keep the numbers as simple as possible. So my bond has a coupon rate of 2%. That means it pays a $1 coupon every six months. And then here in the top part of this panel, I have the term structure at the initial time zero. So that's today. And you can see this bond has one and a half years or 18 months to maturity. Here in orange, I have the initial forward rate term structure. That's plotted in orange over here. So you can see, keep it as clean as possible. I've got a 1%. 2% and 3% forward rates, those are six month forward rates, at half a year, one year, and one and a half years. Now, to keep the example consistent with Tuckman, we're just reminded that that forward rate term structure is informed by two components. It's the term structure of risk-free forward rates here, plus the spread, which would generally be compensation for credit risk. So at one and a half years, for example, we have a 3% forward rate that is the sum of a 2%, I'm sorry, 2.7% risk-free rate plus a three, a 30 basis point credit spread. Of course, there could we could get more sophisticated to add more factors in there. But the simplest, first, the most superficial pass at the term structure here would be a risk-free rate plus a credit spread. And again, these are six-month forward rates. They're not spot rates. So I do have here on the graph, just to remind, but I have it as dashed, that there is an implied spot rate curve as well. So here we are at initial time, and then I've highlighted in blue the uh, implied theoretical price of this 18-month bond that pays a 2% coupon. And I don't need to walk, I don't want to walk through that calculation, except just to say that it's basically taking the bonds cash flows, a one dollar coupon here, a one dollar coupon here, and a final cash flow of one hundred and one dollars coupon plus the principal, and discounting with the uh, forward rate curve. So this bond's price is one hundred dollars and 1.2 cents at time zero. So we could, we could think of that as being right here and pricing the bond according to the term structure. Then I have here in the lower panel six months later. So for me, the hard part of that is just dealing with the time dimension because the central question here is what do we expect to happen to the price of the bond over the next six months or at the end of six months later. In Tuckman's example, I think it goes from May 30th to November 30th or November 31st, something like that. Okay, I've abstracted from particular dates. We're just going marching forward six months in time. Now we have the choice. And there are three basic scenarios. There are scenario one is realized forwards, scenario two is an unchanged term structure, and scenario three is actually the one that oftentimes we make implicitly without thinking about it and actually be the may, may be the least common scenario when we go to make a choice. So first I have realized forward, and I guess the way that I think about this is, remember, we're marching forward six months in time. Realized forwards means that 
when we're here at time zero, these four words are unbiased estimates or predictors of the future rates. So if we go forward here to six months, then we'll be at this point in time. And what we're saying with realized forwards is that this 2% rate that was our one-year forward rate is realized now as our six-month rate. And our 1.5-year rate then becomes realized as our one-year rate. And so you can see my realized forwards, that's what I've got. This 2% is realized, this one-year rate is realized as a six-month rate when we go forward six months. And this one and a half year rate of 3% is realized when we go forward. That's all that means. And then if I reprice the bond, now remember we've gone six months forward, so now it's a, only a one year bond. If I reprice it, and I'll just show you the formula there, right? Now I've only got two cash flows, right? A coupon in six months and a final coupon in one year. If I price this bond under realized forwards, I'm getting $99.51.2, right? But that was just one scenario. At the other end of the spectrum, so to speak, is unchanged term structure. How I think of unchanged term structure is, again, we start here, we go forward six months in time, instead of realized forwards, what's happening is the term structure isn't changing. So I think of it this way. We, in six months time, we're looking at the same term structure. So you can see the difference here, which is significant in my steep term structure here, go forward six months in time, instead of a realized six month forward of 2%, I'm just copying the same forward rate here. The six-month forward rate that I have today is the same six-month forward rate that I have in six months. The six-month forward rate that I had, the, the one-year forward rate that I have today is the same one-year forward rate that I have in six months. So we can think about that as the this term structure moving with us as we go forward in time. And I don't know about you, but in some ways, this one's a little more realistic, although empirically oftentimes it's something in between these two extremes. Now, you'll notice here, I price again, this is a one-year bond in six months, but this time with the unchanged term structure, I'm getting a different price, $100 and almost 50 cents. Do the Does the directionality make sense here? Is that intuitive? After all, we have a steeply upward stroke, upward sloping forward rate term structure. So under realized forwards, our discount rates effectively are much higher under this scenario and we get a lower bond price. If it's an unchanged term structure, our discount rates effectively are lower, we get a higher bond price. Finally, scenario three, unchanged yield to maturity. This is the assumption that we implicitly use when we say the bond pulls to par. And the proof here is in the pudding, so to speak. In this case here, with the unchanged, I am not. I have a hard time superimposing on the graph, except to say that I can. it's easier to do mathematically. We take the bond's price here and infer the yield, as usual with the rate function, multiplying by 2 to get a per annum. And then we go forward six months in, ch in time, and the... Only, we don't change the yield is the key thing, right? We use the yield. In this case, it's going to be two periods. That's one year as opposed to three periods. That's one and a half years. So repricing the bond with the same yield, it just has a shorter maturity. And we get $100 and just slightly above $100. And notice under the unchanged yield, this is the only of the three scenarios where we have a right to expect a pull to par. That was my previous video. And we do get that, right? This bond here is pricing at a premium 
So if the bond, if the yield doesn't change, we expect it to pull the par. So we expect it to decrease. It does decrease slightly um, as expected. And what I also showed here is that um, what's our dollar gain here? Well, it's just shy of a dollar because we received a one dot. This is again a six month. This is a, over the six month period from initial time to six months later. Our dollar gain here is the is uh, capital appreciation plus any coupon. Well, we got a dollar in the coupon, but per the per the pull to part, we lost a little bit on the price. Hence, this is a little bit less than a dollar. But if I divide that dollar gain in the initial price and multiply by two to annualize, I get the 1.992% matching the yield. So that's a bit of a reconciliation. But those are the three basic scenarios, realized forward, unchanged term structure, or unchanged yield to maturity. If the video is helpful, subscribe to the channel and you'll get notified. Thank you.